Let's study 9th standard ICSE Physics Chapter 4, Section A, Pressure Influence. Consider a brick with these dimensions. It is kept on sand or clay. In first case, it is standing upright, and in the second case, it is sleeping horizontally. It's the same brick but different configuration. In which case will it exert a greater force on the sand? Well, the force exerted by both of them will be the same. Exactly same. It's the same brick. They will have the same mass and the same weight. And this force which acts perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. So thrust is force but which is acting perpendicular. Weight is after all gravitational force. So the force is seen. And yet, you will notice that this brick will sink a little bit more in the sand compared to the brick in this configuration. If the weight is same, why is this happening? Well, you can imagine that the entire force is being concentrated onto such a small area of contact. Whereas here, the entire weight or force is concentrated or spread across a larger area of contact. So this brings us to a new concept, a new physical quantity called pressure. Pressure is thrust upon area or force upon area. Thrust is a vector quantity, it's force after all. Its SI unit is Newton. We know these conversions. Pressure is defined as thrust per unit area and its SI unit is Newton per meter square which is also called Pascal. Remember P is small here, smaller case. The symbol is capital P small a. So one pascal can be defined as the pressure exerted on one meter square area when the force is one newton normally. That is, the thrust is one newton. There are other units, of course. For example, dyne per centimeter cube is a CGS unit. Conversion has to be remembered. We also have a KGF per meter square. For atmospheric pressure, we have some other units as well. At sea level, the normal atmospheric pressure is 1 atm, that is 1 atmospheres, which is equal to 760 torr, that's another unit to measure air pressure, and that is equal to 760 millimeter of mercury. In a mercury barometer, in a simple barometer, the height of mercury is 76 centimeters or, seven, or 0 0.76 meter. How does a barometer work will be explained later. And this is equal to 1 lakh 1300 pascal, which is the SI unit of pressure. Even for air pressure, this is the SI unit. And that is equal to 1013 millibars. This can be rounded off to, let's say, 10 raised to 5 pascal. But this is the exact value. So note down this, these values and you have to remember these conversions. Now, what are the ways of increasing pressure? As you can see from the diagram, one way is to decrease the surface area of contact. The smaller the surface area, the more the pressure. And the second way is obviously to increase the weight. If I put another brick on top of it, obviously the pressure will increase and it will sink further. So more the force or more the weight or the thrust, greater is the pressure. So the two ways are either you increase the thrust or you decrease the area. In this way, you can increase the pressure. And the opposite is also true. If you increase the area of contact, then the pressure will decrease. There are some applications for this. For example, the nail's ends are always pointed because when you hit this nail with a hammer on its head, the entire force is now concentrated onto such a small area. So the pressure is immense on the wooden block at this point and the nail will be driven inside the wooden block. Imagine if you would do the opposite. If the head was touching the wooden block and if you would hit the tip, would the nail be driven in? Or if the nail was blunt with a large surface area, would it be easy to drill it into the wooden plank? No, it wouldn't be. It's all about pressure. Similarly, cutting tools like knives and scissors have very sharp edges. Why? Because sharp edges means that would provide a very small area of contact with the paper or cloth. So there will be greater pressure and it will be easy for us to cut it with minimum effort. But sometimes we want to decrease the pressure. For example, your school bag is supposed to be having very wide strips on your shoulder. Straps, I mean, not strips. The straps have to be very wide so that there is a greater surface area of contact and the pressure on your shoulders is minimum. 
So that's the physics behind it. And I believe that that is physics is more important than fashion. So don't purchase bags which look fashionable. Go for comfort. Similarly, you must have seen wide wooden sleepers between railway tracks. The steel railway tracks have these wooden planks in between. What's the reason? Well, you see, the entire weight of the train is on these steel railway tracks, which may cause it to exert great pressure on the land underneath. But if we have wooden planks also, then that increases the overall surface area of contact and the pressure exerted becomes less. Similarly, buildings are made in such a way that the bottom of a building is always broad and wide compared to the walls which will be built above. Because the broader the foundation, less is the pressure on earth. You've seen even Burj Khalifa, the tallest building, is broad at the base. You've never seen a building like this, have you? And now we come to the main topic, pressure and fluids. Yes, even fluids like gases and liquids exert a pressure, but it's a little different from the pressure exerted by solids. The fluid contained in a vessel exerts pressure at all points and in all directions, and that is called fluid pressure. So this is the definition of fluid pressure. Here, in this solid, we know that pressure is being exerted on the sand underneath, so it's acting downwards. But if it is kept in a container, is it exerting any pressure on the walls of the container laterally, on the sides? No, it isn't, because gravity works only downwards. But if the container is filled with a liquid or even a gas, then not only will there be pressure downwards, but also on the sides. And the fluid pressure is equal everywhere. Now look at this uh, experimental demonstration to study some properties of the liquid. First of all, if you make a tiny hole, you will notice that the fluid gushes out with great force, proving that a pressure was acting at that point because of all the fluid on top of it and even the air on top of it. But if we make a hole at a lower depth, we notice that the pressure is less. The deeper we go, more is the pressure. So this proves that the amount of pressure in a fluid depends on the depth. The greater the depth, more is the pressure, which makes sense. You know, if you are deeper, then you have a larger mass of the fluid exerting pressure on top of that point. On the other hand, if I were to make a hole at the same level, let's say here or here or here, I will notice that the pressure remains the same. So the pressure in a fluid at the same depth remains the same and it acts in all directions. Even if I make a hole on this side, even here the water will gush out with the same pressure as it does here. Also, if you look at this picture, you will notice that even though the size of the containers are different, the level of water will be exactly the same in all of them. This property is called a liquid seeks its own level. Yes, the volume of water is different in these containers, but that's irrelevant. What matters is the level is same because the pressure will be same. You see, same depth, same pressure. That's what should be equal. So what's the formula to calculate pressure inside a liquid? If there is a point inside the liquid, how do you calculate the pressure? Well, pressure depends on three factors in a fluid. The depth from the open surface, that is, let's call it H. Then it depends on the force of gravity or G, acceleration due to gravity. Of course, on Earth, there will be a certain acceleration due to gravity. But if you take this same container on the moon, you will notice that the pressure is less because the gravity there is weaker. So G matters. Although on Earth, we can assume G to be a constant. And the third factor the pressure depends on is the density of the liquid. You see, denser a liquid, more is the liquid pressure which can be demonstrated with this diagram. You can see here, even though the level of the liquid is same of water and mustard oil, here the balloon bulges more, which means there is a greater pressure on it. Why? That's because mustard oil is denser. So the formula is pressure is equal to H rho G, where H is the depth, rho is the density of liquid, and G is acceleration due to gravity. But the truth is that the pressure at a point is not just because of the liquid on top of it, but also because of the air pressure on top. So the actual formula would be the pressure at a point in a liquid at depth H is the atmospheric pressure, which is usually 1 atm, plus H rho G. So it has to be added. Now, some consequences of liquid pressure are, first of all, the walls of the dams are made thicker. 
because they have to withstand a great pressure. You see, deeper we go, greater is the pressure. Also, water supply tank is always placed high in any house or colony, usually on the terrace. Because greater the height of the supply tank, more is the pressure with which the water will flow down into the building and come out of the taps of each floor. Also, because the water pressure will increase tremendously as we go deep inside the seas or oceans, deep sea divers should wear a special suit which would protect them from this excessive pressure. Otherwise, they'll get crushed. In fact, if you wish to go very deep, then you'll better go in a submarine which can protect you from the great depths pressure. Finally, size of gas bubbles inside the water. You may have noticed that if you boil or if you heat water, you start seeing bubbles which are small when they start off, but as they rise to the surface, they become larger and larger. Well, that's because the gas which was here, it was under pressure by the liquid from all directions. Now, as it rises up, the volume of the gas is changing, but it's the same mass of gas. No new gas has been added to it. It's just that now the liquid pressure is decreasing. You see, greater, uh, lesser the depth, lesser is the pressure. And if pressure decreases, volume increases. This is called Boyle's law. Boyle's law says that when the pressure on a gas decreases, its volume will increase, which makes sense. That's why in a liquefied petroleum gas LPG cylinder, when you turn it on, the pressure is being released, so it escapes out and spreads. Its volume increases. Inside the cylinder, its volume was very less. In fact, it was so less that it was in the form of a liquid. So now that's the reason why the bubbles increase in size as it goes up. Next, let's study Pascal's law. Pascal's law states that the pressure exerted anywhere in a confined liquid is transmitted equally and undiminished in all directions throughout the liquid. Whenever you learn a law or a definition, you should learn it word to word because if you miss out on even one word, then the meaning changes and you won't get marks. Let's understand this law. For this, let's look at this experiment. We have this flask and we have a piston. When we push the water inside this flask, we see fountains of water jetting out of it in all directions. And the pressure with which it comes out is exactly the same. So that's what the law says, that the pressure remains the same. The pressure exerted anywhere in a confined liquid that is in a container is transmitted equally and undiminished. That means the pressure remains the same in all directions. So if the pressure applied here is, let's say, 40 pascals, then the pressure here will be 40 pascals, here 40 pascals, here 40 pascals, and here 40 pascals. Now, it's not something magical. The pressure remains the same. But you won't get quadruple work being done. The law of conservation of energy still holds here. But this property is very useful in hydraulics. Let's see how. Yeah. Imagine this hydraulic machine in which you apply some pressure here with the help of a weight on this piston A. The liquid is pressed here and this pressure is transmitted undiminished and this piston B is lifted up, which makes sense. If you apply pressure here and it moves downwards, then the pressure will be applied here, which will move upwards. And as per Pascal's law, if 40 Pascal is applied here, then 40 Pascal will be applied here as well. Now what's interesting is pressure is force into area. So if I say that P1 is equal to P2, that means force upon area is equal to force upon area. And on rearranging, I get F2 upon F1 is A2 upon A1. What this means is if the area here is let's say 20 meter squared and the force you're applying is let's say 20 Newton. And if the area, which is clearly larger than this one, area here is 100 meters square, then the force applied here will be 100 Newton. That's very interesting. You can lift an entire car by applying a small weight out here. But again, as I said, there's nothing magical here. Keep in mind that even though you will be able to lift a very heavy thing or apply a large force by exerting a small force out here. But remember, the distance this piston will have to travel, let's say this had to travel 10 meters down, but here this will be lifted by only 2 meters. So if you want an advantage as far as 
force multiplication is concerned then you'll have to sacrifice your speed because the distance this will travel will have to be more than the distance you will get in the output but that's okay um, at least we're able to lift a very heavy load or apply a lot of force with a relatively smaller force simply because the area is great here and the area is small and this is based on the principle of hydraulic machine which is in turn based on pascal's law a small force applied on a smaller piston is transmitted to produce a larger force on the bigger piston that is why this machine is called a force multiplier we will study this in detail in 10th standard physics force multipliers are machines wherein the input requires less force but the output exerts a lot of force but the sacrifice you have to do here is speed decreases which is fine in many processes for example look at this uh, hydraulic press or brahma press for pressing this bale of cotton into a smaller volume now if you do it manually with our hands it will require a lot of force to, in order to decrease the amount of force we have this machine first up the lever which is filled with the uh, the lever which presses this cylinder filled with water cylinder p and piston a is pressed down when it is pressed down of course the water pressure will be transmitted undiminished to this cylinder q this valve v2 will open up more water will enter this and it will be pushed up so if you push it down from here this will be pushed up and that will press this cotton bale against this fixed rigid support next you want to bring it down again open this valve let the water go back and lift this lever up and when you lift the lever up the water is sucked in from this water reservoir the valve v1 will now open up and more water will be sucked in it's like a syringe you know during an injection you notice how the syringe piston is is pulled up and water sucks in to the syringe something like this or a plunger while playing some uh, in some during some festival when you pull the plunger up water is sucked in because of air pressure which we'll study in detail later but that's the same concept here as you pull the lever up what is sucked in here because the valve v1 open and then the process is repeated next push the lever down and the water will be transmitted here and pushing the this piston b or the press plunger or ram up and pressing the bale of cotton a hydraulic jack also works on the same principle you push the lever down from here and from here the car is pushed up so with less effort you can lift a heavy load and finally the hydraulic brakes of a vehicle how does that work so this is the foot pedal when you press on the foot pedal to apply the brakes then the the piston a pushes against the liquid in this cylinder p and this pressure is transmitted equally and undiminished everywhere it reaches here as well and here it pushes piston b2 to the right and piston b1 to the left so whatever pressure you applied here same pressure is being applied by the liquid on this black pistons left and right these pistons will apply a pressure in turn on the brake shoes left and right and when the brake shoe is pressed against this wheel due to friction this wheel comes to a stop so the more the pressure you apply here the more the pressure here the same pressure more the pressure here and here same pressure more and here and here and that's how we can stop the vehicle using hydraulic brakes hi students this is aj sir if you like this video press the like button If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures email me or message me on Instagram check the description for more information